Hello, Dr. Emil Lohan-Gaz are here. Welcome to the Connection Module. Now, in many ways, this week's work is an extension of last week's work. There are just too many tools and ideas regarding interactivity to cover in a week. So we're going to continue what we got into last week, this week. So during this module, you'll be looking into wikis and social learning networks, not to be confused with social media systems like Twitter or Facebook. No, no, no. Social learning networks are similar to social media, but they're specifically geared for educational purposes. They provide safe and arguably effective digital learning environments for students to build online portfolios or collaborate with their fellow students or maybe access specially designed content and so forth. Examples include Edmodo um, or Collaborize Classroom. Um, they're like a private social media tool mixed with a lightweight learning management system. So you'll be looking into those. And you'll also be looking into social media tools as well, specifically Twitter and Google+. Now you'll have a couple of assignments too. You'll be learning about Google Earth and its potential educational value. You'll look at uh, this concept of literature trips that leverage mapping tools to learn more about pieces of literature or historical periods. And finally, you'll explore the use of quick response or QR codes to evaluate their potential for teaching and learning. But the intellectual meat of this module is centered around a relatively new learning theory that's referred to as connectivism. Because our students are so diverse in their abilities, their learning styles, their prior education and so forth, one of the primary things that master educators have to undertake is to teach students how to teach themselves. I contend this is really the only way we can meet the needs of all of our students. Now there's a lot more to it, so let's, let's dive in. As I'm sure you know, learning theories are simply attempts to describe how people learn. They help us understand learning in general, which is an inherently complex process. There are two types of learning theories, internal theories and external theories. Internal learning theories have to do with mental and physical constructs like uh, neuroscience, brain-based learning processes, uh, learning styles, multiple intelligences, and things like that. External theories are those that are steeped in personal or environmental constructs like behavior, observation, and social interchange. There are three learning theories that most educators, scholars, and social psychologists are familiar with. They include behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. These are the traditional theories since they've been around for quite some time. So before we get into connectivism, let's make sure we're clear on the basics of the more traditional learning theories. Behaviorism as a learning theory is based on a change in knowledge through controlled stimulus response conditioning. So the approach suggests that learning is a process of reacting to external stimuli. The learner is dependent on an instructor for acquisition of knowledge. The instructor must demonstrate factual knowledge, then observe, measure, and modify behavioral changes in specified direction. So the learner is in a metaphorical box wherein his learning can be observed. The idea is that the purpose of education is to help a learner build initial schema by adopting knowledge from an instructor through use of the learner's senses. The term behaviorism was coined by John Watson, but the approach was promoted and championed by the likes of Pavlov, Skinner, and Edward Thorndike, the famed American psychologist of the early uh, the early 20th century. Behaviorism proffers big, big benefits because we see large gains in test scores, but it doesn't promote high-level thinking. Next, there's cognitivism. Cognitivism is the theory that humans generate knowledge and meaning through sequential development of an individual's cognitive abilities, such as the mental processes of recognition, recollection, um, analysis reflection, application, um, creation, understanding, um, and evaluation. The cognitivist's learning process is all about learning techniques, procedures, organizational patterns, and, and structures to develop internal cognitive structures that strengthen synapses in the brain. The educator's role is pedagogical in that 
the instructor must develop conceptual knowledge by managing the content of learning activity. So learning is about creating and evaluating in context of this approach. Unlike behaviorist approach, cognitivists promote reasoning and problem solving as the primary role of learning. Then there's constructivism. Constructivism is a theory to explain how knowledge is constructed in the human being when information comes into contact with existing knowledge that had been developed by experiences. It has its roots in cognitive psychology and biology. Uh, constructivists rely on processes of discovery hands-on activity, collaboration, and project-based learning. The approach is built on the work of Jean Piaget and Jerome Bruner. It emphasizes the importance of the active involvement of learners in constructing knowledge for themselves and building new ideas or concepts based on current knowledge and past experience. The main proposition is that learning is a process of constructing a subjective reality, and as such, this reality is developed through social interplay, prior knowledge, and how it's remixed with content provided by an educator. What's great about constructivism is that learning is an authentic process of discovery. It emphasizes first-hand involvement in problems, situations, and creates an engaging learning environment. But critics suggest that the constructivist approach subjects learners to a heavy cognitive load that can interfere with their processing abilities. Now, in broad strokes, behaviorist approach came first, probably starting in the mid-19th century, but it was overtaken in part by cognitivism during the early 20th century, thanks to the exponentially expanding field of gestalt psychology. But sometime around the 30s, constructivism took uh, hold and became the primary mode of education in America, all the way through the 1980s, actually. Of course, that's not to say that behaviorist or cognitivist principles were totally replaced by constructivism. No, no. Rather, the three approaches mixed with one another to form a more holistic approach to education. Some content simply requires rote memory and task-based learning processes. Some content requires more reasoning and critical thought. And, and some learning has to be constructed or developed by the learner himself. But with the coming of the digital age, some thought leaders began to take note of what happens to learners when they have access to the world's knowledge with just the flick of the mouse. And it's with the prolific availability of the World Wide Web that a new mode of learning, a new theory in essence, began to make its mark. You see, scholars and psychologists started to note that learning wasn't just about understanding, remembering, creating, evaluating, analyzing, or applying. More and more, the role of recognition and connection were becoming valued in the learning process. So, based on the works of Albert Bandura and Leah Vygotsky, connectivism was born. Probably around the 1990s, but not formally until 2005, thanks in part to the work of George Siemens and Stephen Downs, who published seminal works on the topic. Both Downs and Siemens purported that Learning is a process of connecting specialized nodes of information sources. That's another way of saying it is that learning itself is distributed within a network, be it a, a neural network or an electrical network. It's a social process that's enhanced by technology. It's about recognizing and interpreting patterns, not just computing information or personal development. So whereas the tr traditional learning theories were about stimuli response, knowledge constructs, and socialization, this new approach was more about connecting information nodes that exist within a diverse network, which is the central aspect for connectivism, the metaphor of a network. So what's a node? <laughs> A node is a source of information such as an organization, data, feelings or experiences, and media. Connectivism sees learning as the process of creating connections and expanding or increasing network complexity. Not all connections are equal strength. The network metaphor allows a notion of nowhere the understanding of where to find the knowledge when it's needed, to supplement the ones of know-how and know-what that make the cornerstones of many theories of learning. As Down states, at its heart, 
Connectivism is the thesis that knowledge is distributed across a network of connections and therefore that learning consists of the ability to construct and traverse those networks. What's most interesting to me is that based on this approach, learning may reside in non-human appliances. Knowledge is no longer seen as something that humans have, but as information that can reside anywhere in the form of bits. What humans do is make connections to these nodes of bits, and it's that process, those patterns that need to be acquired by students just as much as their multiplication tables, their understanding of the written word, and their exposure to world cultures. So, in effect, knowing the capitals of the states is less valued, but understanding the concept of the capital city and the keyword strings that can be used to learn about individual capital cities is more valued. Learning is more critical than knowing. Whereas teaching entails modeling and demonstrating, learning entails practicing and reflecting and in learning, perceiving connections between fields or ideas and concepts. This is the core skill of connectivism. In fact, connectivism suggests that decision making is itself a learning process. Choosing what to learn and the meaning of incoming information is seen through the lens of a shifting reality. While there is a right answer now, it may be the wrong one tomorrow due to the alterations in the information climate affecting the decision. Presumptively, you can see why connectivism is thought of as the learning theory for a digital age through RSS feeds, blogs, search engines, Web 2.0 tools, and the fact that more and more people are connected to each other via the internet, connectivism is a much more viable learning theory. As a ninth grade student once said, the need for me to know what started the Civil War went away when I got my cell phone. <laughs> of course, the student wasn't uh, devaluing the understanding of what the Civil War was or its impetus, just that knowing the names of the key players, knowing the names of the various battles and the dates and such is not important anymore. He doesn't need to have memorized those things to demonstrate competency of the Civil War because, like adults, all he has to do is look it up, learn it for his purpose at hand, and then move on to another topic. So whereas I started this talk by pointing to two types of learning theories, internal and external, let me conclude it by taking another approach, one wherein learning theories are categorized as those that are objective and those that are constructive. The objectivist approach suggests that knowledge is processed through inductive and deductive reasoning, whereas constructivist approach suggests that knowledge is constructed through personal understanding from meaningful, shared experiences. So we can look at the learning process as one wherein not only does the student connection with the instructor is valued, but the student's connection to himself, to another student, or to a large group of others is just as important. So, what's the bottom line? According to connectivist approach, learning is a process of connecting specialized nodes or information sources so that learners can improve their own learning by plugging into an existing network. So as you move through this week's assignments, readings, and discussion, ask yourself, how are you educating students to make connections between fields, ideas, and concepts to recognize patterns and create knowledge, not just consume it? Learning happens in a lot of ways, not through just courses that we take. We learn through email, through web searches, through Twitter conversations, through dinner discussions. What are the skills needed for your students to learn effectively in a society that values currency, you know, being accurate and up to date? Is knowing where to find information more important than knowing the information itself? And how can technology help answer these questions? Have fun. <laughs>